This is a recap of my first exclusive Dev Relic video on Fumbling in the Dark that I streamed a day ago, and I planned this video for those who missed it. I chose Fumbling in the Dark because there wasn't a clear winner in my comments or Discord as to which Dev Relic people wanted to see me do for the 500 sub special. Initially, I thought about just doing them in order from the Dev Relics that I don't have already, and was set to do Insanity Beach first, but I changed my mind in favour of Fumbling in the Dark so that I could start the trend with a bang and more exciting level. Fumbling in the Dark was in both mine and Wumpa Lewis's top 5 hardest relics for Crash 1. At number 2, we have Fumbling in the Dark. You will certainly be fumbling plenty of runs in this level. This is one of the dark levels in the game, where you need to maintain a constant source of light by breaking the Aku Aku crates along the path. Even though Aku Aku has a different purpose here, he still allows you to take a hit without dying, but in most situations it won't matter because without Aku Aku you can't see anything. This level's platinum is 1 minute and 41 seconds, so already it's a fairly long level but feels much longer when getting hit results in a restart nearly every time. And the dev relic was 6 seconds faster than the time I achieved beating Lewis's relic. Beating Lewis's time already took 40 minutes, so I knew this could easily be an hour or longer of grinding. The thing about getting the platinum relic on this level was that it was the level itself that was hard, not really the time. It's just a straight line, so it's really a simple level. But given that death is all but guaranteed if you get hit at all in this level and lose your light source, you want to err on the side of caution more times than not. Wumpelosi's time allowed for a maximum of two big hesitations. Any more than that and you're going to lose. So the thought of getting a faster time of 1 minute 26 or higher from my previous time of 1 minute 32 meant that no hesitations were going to be an option here. Now I just want to play for you the beginning section of the level to show you where there is a 3 second time save that is possible. And I even got it about 6 times across my 2 hours of attempting the dev relic. As you can see, you need the perfect run at the beginning with some bullshit jumps, a range of short and long hops so that you're bouncing around like a Duracell bunny, not getting the slightest shred of Crash's hair caught on any of the scenery, and a lot of luck. Just change the letter L in that word to F and that will summarise most of my commentary for that stream. You see, this section of the level appears to be timed, based on Crash's positioning and proximity. So, in an ideal world, you do something similar to the lab and wait until the starting cycle lines up perfectly, but that doesn't work here, as the platforms that move on the y-axis seem to only trigger if Crash is within range of them. If I got my best run and added this strat into it, my final time could have been around a high 122 or a low 123. It is possible to beat the dev relic without it, but everything else needs to be near perfect, and near perfect is exactly what I had to do. So I'll quickly summarise the troubles I had on this level, and then I have a bonus section for you to enjoy, so stay tuned for that. First of all, I spent around 90 minutes of my 2 hour and 9 minute playtime just trying to get the fast strat consistently. This jump around the pillar was brutal, as Crash immediately starts to slide off, and so you need to get your timing down to perfection to hop straight back off again so as not to die. For the big jump section at the end of the beginning, some people suggested damage boosting off of this ring of spikes, but I quickly discovered that it has no collision, and so you just fall right through them. Other notable issues was the inconsistency of this swinging axe that sometimes allows you to damage boost through, which is actually fine here as there's an Aku Aku mask right ahead to replenish your light source, but sometimes it would just sweep you clean off. And the other major issue was the exact same issue I had beating Lewis the first time, you have to spin this spider correctly to the right to main Aku's light for the best amount of time. If this spider is spanned into the next Aku Aku crate, you lose about 2 seconds of Aku's light, and this means that when you encounter the rats and swing axes further on, and to top it off a large gaping hole right before the next light source, you'll either mistime your jump and fall into the hole due to having no more light, or you'll not be able to focus your eyes on both the swinging axes and the three rats approaching simultaneously. But if you can make it past, the last 15% of the level is a breeze. In the two hours I played, I only finished the level a total of six times, including the time that I beat the dev. I'm now going to show you my finished run, and following that there's a bonus section for you. No, 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 no. No. This jump arc is different. Yeah, yeah. 
It's very, very noticeable on this one. Did anyone else just see that? That was fucking next level shit. The timing... The timing, I think, triggers in, like, in sections. I think the timing for one part starts when you cross a certain threshold. Like, um, this part here, for example, it does not trigger until you've moved a little bit through the level. Like, I've seen from far enough away the axes literally waiting for me to show up. Alright, we're just gonna wait for you. It's not ideal. In fact, it's very not ideal. It loses us a second, so maybe we actually can't wait for you. So yeah, that's nice to know. We've actually gotta take that risk every single time because it loses us a whole second if we wait. Which we actually can't afford. Alright, at least I'm getting the hang of that spider. That makes me slightly happy. Right, this, yeah, that jump there, I don't know what it is, but I sometimes just don't make the threshold. No idea why. Come on, please. Please! Please! The end's right there. Fun! Yes! Fuck yes! Fuck! Fuck! Yes! I don't care that it's only a piddly shit amount that we beat him by. As you can see, I only beat the dev relic by 20 milliseconds. But that's all you need to claim victory, so I'm happy to let fumbling in the dark fumble in my past. And now for the bonus section that I promised. Enjoy this collection of some notable YouTubers getting the best times that I could find for them on fumbling in the dark. Don't forget to subscribe and help me reach the next milestone of 600 subs, because every 100 subs that I get, I will do another dev relic attempt. Next time, it will be on a Crash 2 video. So I was about to say goodbye to Fumbling in the Dark Forever, put a nice big bow on top and send it off to the Netherlands. Not like Holland Netherlands, but you know what I mean, like never play this level again. When I was putting together the bonus section for the video that will be on shortly, and I sent a message to a friend of mine. His name is Jormos, but his YouTube name is Errorjorma555. He's the guy that's been trying to beat my time beating Lewis's time. And I said, oh man, I was going to include your Fumbling in the Dark Relic run, but I noticed that your run starts 10 seconds in, so it won't really fit with the video. He replied saying, oh, let me just record another one. Out of nowhere, he sends me a link that I wake up to this morning to a video of him not only beating the dev time, but beating my time too, even though he didn't know what my time was. So I couldn't let that stand. So I spent an hour this morning really perfecting Fumbling in the Dark. That meant I had to learn the fast strat. So I'm going to play my updated best time for you now. <laughs> I'm now going to play the run in slow motion and explain what goes into this run. It really is all about the start. If you can perfect the start, you're going to beat the dev time. There are a lot of things you can do later to improve your time, but I didn't bother with those. I was just happy to beat my friend. So what you really want to do is you can either do the clock strat of pressing pause to buffer, which is a superior strat, but I don't like doing it. Or you can do what I do here and get a slight run up to the clock. 
Now it's important to note with this level that the cycles are independent of each other and there seems to be proximity triggers that determines when platforms start moving. So the beginning of the level basically goes exactly as it did in my previous run, but here's the big change. When you reach this platform here, as soon as your big toe touches this platform, you need to jump straight off it to the right. Now you can do it to the left, but I advise the right because there are fewer scenery items in this path for you to potentially get stuck on. So jump off to the right. You can see there's a stack of chairs on the left side, whereas on the right side we get to avoid those. So when you land on the right side here, immediately hop again and then jump around the archway in that order, in that speed, in that succession. And then once you've got a little bit of a run up, I want you to jump into the square platform as it's coming through the archway. If it's already past the archway, you've missed your chance. Then what you want to do, some people do a little bit of a spin to maintain momentum. I couldn't get that to work, but you do need to have a little bit of momentum to do a running jump from this platform to the next section. I tried it where in, in my mind, I thought if I land on the very edge of this platform, I'm going to have an easier time making the jump. But the issue is, is that you have no momentum going into the jump. So you nearly always fall short without a little bit of a run up. But yeah, there's there's also a really high death plane. So sometimes you'll be poised to actually make the jump and then you'll just fall through the floor to your death anyway. That happened to me a few times. It was really frustrating. But basically this level is reset hell. If you can get past this section, nothing else in the level will really bother you as long as you know the level because there are no surprises in fumbling in the dark as long as you keep going. The cycles will always be the same. I mentioned there are some improvements I could do later on. Basically where the spiders come down and you bounce off them to go forward, you can actually jump to the sides there to avoid doing the whole bouncing animation. It is quite risky though, especially with how awful the start is. I'm talking it would take me 20 to 30 tries just to have one attempt at beating this level. But we did it, and now time for the real bonus section.